What's going on, everybody? My name is Jake with Code4 Defense, and today we're here in the shop taking a look at the iRay ML19 Mini Thermal Monocular. Very excited to get this thing into the shop. We're going to give you all an unboxing video, as well as give you some of the overview and some of our thoughts and opinions on the iRay ML19. Let's take it over to the tabletop and see what we've got. All right, like I said, we're taking a look at the iRay ML19 Mini Thermal Monocular today. And this is the package that it comes in. This is the mini series 384 core, 19 millimeter objective. Um, nice little packaging, crack it open. And inside you'll see that there is a nice black carrying case. So the carrying case is very nice, um, pretty well made. It's certainly not a hard case, but uh, more than I was expecting for the price range of this monocular, to be honest. Nice little setup inside of the main pouch here. We've got the device itself. We have the carrying strap that comes with the carrying case. This hooks to the D-rings there if you wanted to hold it across to you like a satchel or something like that. Inside of this pouch here, there is the battery extender that works for um, the larger style rechargeable batteries that you can get online. Uh, this just screws onto the front of this port right here gives you an extended battery that has a three hour life as opposed to the hour and a half life that a CR123 gets you. Inside of this pouch, we have lots of different cables. So the first cable, well, it's kind of a smattering of cables. This first cable is just a USB to um, USB-C type connector. That's what plugs into the front of the device right here. This is the um, USB-C to analog video out. And this is what you would use if you wanted to use a DVR to record the uh, video that this can produce. It doesn't have any onboard um, video saving capability. You would have to use this and a DVR, which I'll show you some footage of this being recorded later. So that's the cable for that. You also have a um, USB-C cable again that's angled. And what this is for is attaching um, this thermal monocular to a helmet. This angled piece fits in nicely here to the front of the unit where the USB-C port is. And it just makes it a little bit more streamlined for running the cable backwards towards the uh, rear of your helmet where the power supply would be. Um, so on that note, you can run an external power supply as long as it's limited to five volts. They say on a 10,000 milliamp power supply unit, you can get up to 18 hours of continuous use out of this thing, which is pretty impressive, especially for how small some of those uh, 10,000 milliamp devices are. Also inside of the carrying case is the remote control. And this works exactly like the remote control on the front. Um, you've got a couple more buttons, power on, um, as well as some other manual modes, and then the selector knob on here, which works just like uh, the selector knob on the device itself. There is also a rubber eyepiece that's included um, for minimizing the splash that comes off of the device for other people that are using night vision style devices. As you can tell, the unit is extremely small, probably about four inches in overall length. Um, it has a battering compartment here in the front that just unscrews to reveal um, two batteries that came with the device and they are rechargeable um, batteries that mimic kind of a CR123, but they have a USB, uh, standard mini USB connector that recharges them. And having the two rechargeable batteries is extremely nice. Um, I'll pull this one out here so that you can see what I'm talking about because the battery life on this device with the um, batteries installed, the 650 milliamp um, 16340 batteries with the USB port right there for recharging, the battery life on these is only an hour and a half. So you don't have just a ton of runtime. You have more than enough to do um, a simple task or some simple work if you needed to do that. But having two of these come with the package was pretty nice. And the recharging feature is even nicer because you would be burning through quite a bit of money if you were trying to use CR123s in this long term. It would definitely get a little bit messy. So that's a nice addition um, that came with the packaging as well. So that's everything that came with it. I also purchased um, the PVS14 objective, or excuse me, ocular 
conversion kit, and that essentially looks like a PVS-14 ocular, and it has a proprietary um, adapter that works with the mini. All you have to do is unscrew the ocular lens on this side, and then you just screw on the PVS-14 ocular lens. And what that does you, or what that gives you, is quite a bit more eye relief. So with the standard ocular installed, your eye relief is about to right here for you to get a good picture through the unit itself. Um, so it's pretty limiting. It's very handheld, wouldn't work well on a helmet mounted um, solution. With the PVS-14 ocular, the, your eye relief is more about like right here and even a little bit further. So it gives you quite a bit more eye relief. It puts it on par with the standard PVS-14, which in theory would work well for running the two in tandem. However, in practice, I found that I had lots of issues and we'll talk about that later on. So that's kind of just a uh, quick rundown of the ocular um, conversion for the PVS-14. If you weren't gonna run it on a helmet, do I still think that that's worth it? Yes, because it gives you so much more eye relief and it just feels like it makes the unit a little bit more usable if you were out in the field looking for somebody or doing you know, any kind of scanning or anything like that for heat signatures out in the distance. Um, with the standard ocular installed though, the unit is quite a bit more um, compact, quite a bit more easy to stow in your gear, and it just feels a little bit more lightweight. So um, if you don't plan on helmet mounting this, I don't think that this is the necessary addition, although the extra eye relief is kind of an added benefit. So I'll play you some footage right now of the unit itself, um, but it is stunning the quality that you get from the um, from the 384 core that this thing has. It is certainly not on par with some of the 600 level cores that are out there, but for you know about 2,500 bucks, the capability that this monocular gives you is pretty unparalleled actually. It's extremely well, uh, the picture is extremely nice, gives you lots of definition, and you can see thermal signatures for quite some ways. And I'll show you different distances right now, out to 25, out to 50, and out to 100 yards to show you what a human-sized target looks like, or a human-sized subject looks like on the thermal monocular, so you can kind of get kind of an idea of what you're looking for. Um, going over to the device itself, you've got the front piece right here, which is the main um, objective lens. and Mine came installed with this lens cover that actually is like a little iris that closes to cover and protect the main lens of the camera itself. You just open that up and it reveals um, kind of that thermal glass that everybody has come to know. Um, as you go back here, you've got the battery compartment that I've already shown you unscrews and reveals the battery that goes inside. This right here is to help the thermal imagery detect um, the different signatures that are out there gives you a little bit better idea of what's going on. You've got your ocular with your focus here, and you also have your gross focus up here. So to do your gross focus, you adjust this ring. Your fine focus to adjust to the screen is this ring right here. And then this right here is kind of the powerhouse of the device itself. It's a um, selector as well as a push button, and that's how you uh, utilize all the different features of the device itself. So. If you um, push and hold, it's going to turn the device on. And once the device is on, you can do a short push and that'll access a menu within the device that you can change the brightness, the color palettes. Um, you can access some of the different modes and stuff like that. The, you can do the NUC or uh, NUC or however you pronounce it that resets the thermal calibration to the environment that it's in and then it exits the, that little menu. If you do a long hold, um, it will bring up a menu for, it will bring up a menu for like the main device itself. So all the different features that you would wanna access, like contrast, compass calibration, um, everything that you wanna see like picture in picture, which is just the standard picture and a far away view cropped at the top. Um, it's got everything that you would want for it. So um, that's kind of how you access the device um, internally. And it's a pretty nice little feature that it's just this simple little operation. You scroll to what you want, you use that to select it, you use that to unselect it. It works really, really well. Um, so kind of some of my thoughts on the device itself. For $2,500, 
the form factor that you get, the usability that you get, this thing is a home run. It's pretty unmatched for the other thermal monoculars in that $2,500 range. The quality of the picture that you get with this thing is just absolutely stunning for that price. Um, if your intent is to helmet mount it though, I would say this probably is not the device for you. And there's one reason for that, and that's you can't adjust what I'm gonna call the collimation or the, um, the picture itself, you can't adjust it to meet your eye so that it overlays perfectly. And if you were gonna use this in tandem with a PBS 14, so you had a thermal on one side and a PBS 14 on the other, you can't adjust this so that the images overlay properly. So if it was just two PBS 14s and you were gonna run those two side by side, you wouldn't be able to run um, those two devices well without collimating them, meaning lining up the image so that each side is seeing the exact same thing. The thing that you get with this is a little bit of a ghosting effect, and there's probably no way that I can show you this, but um, the thermal overlay that you have over the PBS-14 when you're looking in one eye and the other causes a ghost of the thermal, and then it's offset by the actual object that you're looking at. So it doesn't give you a very clean picture with that. That said, if you were using this for like scanning or doing something like that, this is a very, very cool option and we'll take it back um, over to the shop and I'll give you some of my final thoughts at the very end of this. But very cool little device. Let's take it back and I'll give you kind of the final rundown. All right, that was kind of an overview and unboxing of the iRay ML19 thermal monocular. As you can see, this is an extremely capable unit. It works very well for the price, $2,500 for the quality, and I'll play the video here again that you get is absolutely outstanding. Um, very cool unit. If you guys have any questions on it, please leave it in the comment section down below. I'm gonna have a video coming out very soon that talks about this versus the FLIR Breach and which one I would choose and why. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe as that video is gonna be coming out here in the next couple of weeks. If you're interested in this type of content, we're gonna be having quite a bit more of it come out with night vision related items. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give us a like. You guys stay safe and we will see you on the next one.